Hi, hello, my name is Ollie Bliss and this is my channel Book Draw. For those who don't know, I enjoy looking at queer fiction and occasionally I create images out of it. Today I'm doing a tag. This tag I managed to catch on to by the wonderful Jen Gallagher um, and she um, uh, found it from Ink Not Blood who originally created this tag. Um, so I am looking at um, the over 30s tag right now. Um, I've written down the, um, the, the different questions and I will run through them and um, we can just take it from there. So the first one is name your favourite, um, one of your favourite books that features a protagonist who is over 30 years of age. Um, so for this one I chose The Book of Lies which is by um, Felice um, Picano. Um, now this book is one of those books which you just don't see that much rolling around on booktube and I'm kind of trying to help encourage people to read it. So I think it's a really, really, really good book um, and it's just really underrated, uh, it's under the radar for a lot of people. Um, but it features uh, the lead character Ross who um, comes to look after this um, uh, old dead author's body of work and he stumbles across this material for um, a missing piece of work and he ends up going down this kind of literary uh, rabbit hole of discovery and drama and it's all wrapped up with this group um, called the Purple Circle who were big between the 1970s and 1980s and what I quite liked about this is it's actually kind of uh, partially drawn from influences in reality so because there was the Violet Quill which was a group of um, uh, of gay men basically um, I think it was just like seven guys um, who were based in New York and um, in uh, 1980 to 1981 uh, they just kind of critiqued each other's work um, so I really liked it for that kind of link into history and the way um, this writer was kind of referencing some of the things that were happening through that and it inspired this novel um, but what I really liked is the kind of underlying messaging of what Book of Lies is all about. I don't want to spoil too much of the mystery within it but it's one of those books which is kind of a slow build and a simmer and then it goes to this really kind of um, cool place towards the end. But I guess what I should say in terms of relation to, to Ross, the, um, the lead character, um, I, I like in terms of all the things that he kind of stands for and um, how he is treating this material and this kind of journey of discovery that he is going on and it's just um, it's a kind of um, it's not like an adventure that you would necessarily expect but for booktubers and people interested in books this is the type of journey I think people would really appreciate. So the next question is name a book that represents you when you were younger. So for this one I actually chose a book from the Animorphs series because Animorphs was one of those series which really inspired me to um, read and read by myself. I consumed those books so quickly as soon as I could like get enough money together to go out to the shop and get them I kept on going down to our local WH Smith and I would just like be constantly in the state of desire and anticipation because I would want to progress on to the next ones but I only really had enough money in like in terms of the way my mum would occasionally give me bits of money would enable me to get maybe one or two books and then it was a state of also waiting for the next one to come out and they were just so good and gripping at that age there was no other kind of adventure story out there but the one which I kind of would hone in on in response to this question is The Encounter, which was the third book in the series. So this was leading with Tobias, who um, in the very first book, for context, like The Animals is about a group of kids who gain the ability to morph into animals, animorphs. Um, so, um, and that's through alien technology, won't kind of go down that rabbit hole, <laughs> but um, the, in terms of this, these group of kids have these powers, there's a space invasion which is happening around them and it's very subtle, like these yurks are taking over people's brains and um, so it's kind of all very insidious and subtle um, and these are the like frontline heroes who are standing up against them because they've been given this gift. But with Tobias, in the first book, unfortunately, he ends up um, getting trapped inside a uh, red-tailed hawk's body. 
Um, and in the third book, it's really exploring him coming to terms with this process. But what I really liked about it is Tobias is a, a real outsider. He's, he was an outsider in his school. He, um, he didn't um, have, I, think, I can't remember if he actually had parents or if he was just with like a, a foster situation. I don't even remember now, but he was kind of very alone. And then he just kind of got caught up with the, the rest of the group um, when um, they gained this technology and got introduced uh, to this alien race. Um, but he ends up getting trapped because um, you're only able to stay in an animal's body for a process of two hours. And because of some epic fight that happened, and it made me really upset by the end uh, of the first book, um, he ends up getting trapped. Um, but there's this sadness that he um, is trapped, but also um, it, it's then him gaining this acceptance of who he is becoming. But there's this real kind of uh, discussion within the story on a very kind of like kiddish level, but it's about the, what separates us from the animals. And it's about him learning how he is connected to his emotions that um, it brings him to his, his humanity. Um, it, and as a, a kid who was quite isolated and alone at that time, being the only gay of the village, it was really edifying to have this kind of character who was a bit of a drifter, a bit of a loner, um, who didn't really have um, like really secure friendship group, who was gaining a friendship group through this process, but also finding his own path, his own way. Um, so I kind of just loved it for a lot of reasons, and I, it kind of just stands out. But the, the whole series is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> I don't know necessarily if I'd feel the same way if I read it now, um, but at the time it was just perfect for what I needed. Okay, so the third one is a name a book which represents where you are in your life now. So for this one, I actually chose Catch-22, which is by Joseph he um, Heller. I really, really like this book, but... <laughs> this book also is one which I would say I identify with where I am now in the world. So the book leads with Captain John Yosarison, and he is in a position where he is part of the army and he's desperately trying to leave, doesn't want to be thrown into all these wars and things and is trying to look for an escape route. And the essence of the Catch-22 is this really convoluted bureaucratic system he can't escape from um, because there's so many bits which are basically entrapping him in a, a cycle of where he has to stay in the position that he's in. And as someone who works in a bureaucratic system, I can certainly understand <laughs> uh, just the ludicrous situations that can come out um, of that position uh, where you think that you are identifying a way forward and then there is some weird bureaucratic red tape somewhere that makes you feel like you're starting right back at the beginning again. It's just a very uh, telling tale in terms of uh, how we can all end up subscribing to these systems that we then can't escape from. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> So the next one is name a book that represents something that has never changed about you. So for this one I chose Draw the Line by Lauren Lynn. I choose this book because it's about a character who has a small unit of friends but also um, the, the lead character uh, is found often in his room um, drawing out a comic book character called Graphite. I think there's parts of me that utilises artistic expression as a form of activism and I feel personally that art can be quite empowering and useful in that way to get messages out in a very universal way visually. So the lead character Adrian he actually observes something that happens in this car park and um, he has to then gain a call to action in terms of calling out someone who was abusive and he uses his powers in terms of his skill at drawing and creating cartoons to create a narrative um, about this situation. And it's about 
that what happened thereafter, I kind of was expecting it to kind of end once he had kind of called it out, but it does continue. But what I did also like that it has an element of empathy towards all the people involved in that situation, which I wasn't expecting, but actually made it a much richer read. But in terms of that core thing of what I don't think has changed within me, I think it's my interest in art and my interest in activism in different ways and how you can be an activist um, through these smaller um, measures which don't necessarily have to be through a use of force. They can be about creating dialogue and discussion and I guess that's kind of where I'm at as a cornerstone and trying to use empathy to understand situations. I think that's kind of a bit of me. <laughs> so I think that, uh, this is the reason mainly why I chose Draw the Line. I think it captures a lot of creativity and activism in one go. Number five is name a favourite classic. So for this one um, I just chose uh, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. I was actually looking through like what defines a, a, a classic and then of the ones through Google that came listed, um, uh, I leant towards To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Deals with racial inequality, injustice and social structures of class. Um, I just think that in terms of the way it's delivered, it, because it's through the, the eyes of a young person um, whose father is supporting um, a black man who has supposedly uh, raped and attacked a white woman. Um, it's about the society of that time, and it's still prevalent to right now, I would suggest, in terms of how people can jump on board and make accusations towards people. I mean, you could say the James Charles stuff, if you've been following that, it, it is an example in some ways of how people are treated guilty until proven innocent. But uh, the really sad part of this is this element of race that sits within To Kill a Mockingbird and how that changes the tone and the outcome um, of the entire situation within the book. Um, but I do like it that it has all these kind of wider issues that it's drawing in, uh, in a way which isn't overwhelming or done tokenistically, it's done in a really authentic and genuine way, um, and it's just a great read. And then finally, um, to, yeah, I have to talk about a book that I'd like to read in the year of my birth. Now, I kind of, like, was wondering whether or not I wanted to actually reveal this one, because it would then, then you would know how old I, uh, I am, and I don't know how comfortable I am with that, but then I was like, yeah, it's fine. Um, <laughs> but the book that I chose, uh, is the uh, the Hands Made Tale by Margaret Atwood because I have seen the series. I love the series, um, I, and I'm really excited to see what happens to it next. I know the book is um, is different, and um, that's partly the reason why I want to read the book. It's really stupid as well. Uh, we actually own two copies in our house because the pair of us, after watching <laughs> the first series, just went out without really talking to it to each other. And then we were like, oh, we both want to read this book. Yeah, we have had that on our shelves for quite some time now and still not picking it up. So yeah, I really need to get on board with that. Uh, finally, I am supposed to um, also tag people in this. I don't feel comfortable outing people in terms of the, those who are over 30 and just in case I get it wrong as well. I'm kind of one of those people who sits in that middle ground and I can, uh, I could just presume and I might get it wrong, so I'm not gonna. Anyway, this is enough from me. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will talk to you all again real soon. Okay, bye.